Welcome into another edition of COVID Conversations. I'm Adam Gobb, the Communications Director for Gaston County. I'm joined here today by Kenneth Black. He's a resident, a longtime resident of Gaston County, and uh, Kenneth has been nice enough to, to come into the studio here to talk a little bit about um, just the heartache and some of the really difficult things that he's dealt with in dealing with COVID-19. Uh, Kenneth, thanks so much for coming in and joining us today. I want to ask you a little bit about uh, when you first contracted COVID, we were talking before we started uh, recording and you said that you, you came down with COVID just before Christmas last year? Yes, sir. What, what was that like? I mean, did, when did you first think, oh boy, this, this, this could be COVID? Well, I was working and I got a, felt like a sinus infection. So I called my doctor to see if he could get me something for sinuses. And he said, you got to take the test first. Hmm. So I went and took the test and then uh, December 23rd, it came back positive. So you've basically been out of work since basically right before Christmas last year. Yes, sir. What was, what was the initial battle with COVID like? Because you ended up in the, in the hospital on two different occasions, right? Yes, sir. Did you end up, I mean, were you just in kind of a normal unit? Did you end up in the ICU? Well, when the, the rescue truck come to the house to get me and I went to the emergency room, then they put me in the COVID wing, which in turn was quarantined. Nobody could come in, nobody couldn't come out, you couldn't, you, the door had to stay shut all the time. But you know, and I knew something was bad going on then. And you, you and your wife both tested positive at basically the same time, right? Same time. Uh, fortunately for, for her, her symptoms weren't as bad as yours, right? Right. Um, so once you were able to get out of the hospital, she was able to kind of help take care of you. But if you can kind of talk a little bit about kind of what some of the symptoms that you were still dealing with even after you came out of the hospital the first time. Well, when I come out the first time, you know, I come home and I wasn't home no time. I'd gained 30 pounds in weight. Wow. Because of my heart condition that I've got now, congestive heart failure. And then it wasn't fitting out the fluid like I was supposed to. And then it, they wound up saying I had kidney failure stage three kidney failure, and my lungs was in bad shape. So. And, and before you went into the hospital with COVID, it's not like you had all of these issues already, correct? Correct, I was working seven days a week, 12 hours a day. I fit as a, I, great. In terms of what you've had to deal with over the past, gosh, nine plus months now, what is a, a typical day like for you? Because you, you said that you're basically out on long-term disability right now. Right. Well, I get up in the morning and uh, I do very little. At first, it was hard for me to even walk down to the mailbox and come back to the house. And then I get, where I, when I try to stand up, I get swimmy-headed, dizzy. And then I was there, I wasn't home probably a week or so and they put me right back in the hospital hmm. to get the fluid off from me. And then when I come out that time, you know, I was, I was able to, they got me on the right medicine to kind of control the fluid, but it's been a battle ever since. And you said, I mean, you talked about working seven days a week. I mean, you weren't just working a desk job, you were working a job that required some, some physical labor, right? Yes, I worked maintenance department at Man Humble. And I was with moving a bunch of lines around and stuff at the time, you know, I was working, pulling machinery, pulling pipe wrenches and stuff like that. And I mean, now, I mean, you talked about just being able to walk around the house is, is a bit of a challenge for you now right. at this time. What has been your experience in terms of, you know, family, friends and neighbors, you know, have you, have you talked with folks that have kind of said, you know, I don't think COVID's that big of a deal. Has, has kind of what you've gone through changed anybody's mind? I think it's kind of woke a lot of people up because a lot of people, you know, saying, you know, I don't know about it, I don't know about it now, they're kind of looking at it because it's put me down. And this is something that basically in the estimation of your doctors, like these are going to be ailments that are basically going to be with you probably for the rest of your life that you're going to be now battling, you know, taking medicine for, doing treatments for to, to try to combat all these different things that are coming at you as a result. Yeah. What would be your message for anyone that 
hasn't gotten the vaccine yet and, and isn't sure about getting it. The COVID is real. They need to get their shots because I was put down. I just about didn't make it, and I'll be honest. And this, I couldn't go through it again, so I took the shot. And I'd had no effects out of the shot. You know, but I require, I, you know, I say require. You know, I urge everybody to go get the shot, the vaccines, because it, the COVID's real. What do you think has been, the, for you, the, the most challenging part of, of being what I think the medical community has labeled a, a COVID long hauler, somebody that's, that's dealing with you know, just these multiple symptoms months and months after you initially had COVID? Well, you know, I, I thought I'd be back on my feet before now, but when they, everything just kept going further down, 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 you know, but the COVID just takes a toll on you, so you, you know. It's just, it's real. Is there anything else about kind of your experience or, or anything that I didn't ask about that you wanted to mention? Well, you know, when I first got it, now my wife was really supportive with me. She was there for me all the time. If it hadn't been for her, I don't know what I'd have done because there were days I couldn't get out of the chair, mm -hmm. couldn't breathe. So, but, you know, and the last, Three weeks, I was on a walker because the COVID messed up my kidneys, and then the kidneys gave me what they call a severe case of gout. But I thank the good Lord I'm back on my feet again. Absolutely. Well, Kenneth, I appreciate you coming in today to, to tell a little bit about your story, and, and you know, hopeful that you know by sharing your story today that that'll convince some people that um, you know. Uh, COVID is very much a, a, a real disease that affects people, you know, young, old, healthy, um, and, you know, maybe consider getting, getting the vaccine. Yes, sir. COVID has no age limit, no race limit. It's real. It's out there. Absolutely. Kenneth Black, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. I wear a mask for my daughter. We, we wear, wear a mask, mask for our family. family. I wear a mask for my uncle who is battling cancer. It's going to take all of us masks together. So I'm here with Public Health Director Steve Eaton and he's joined me today to talk a little bit about some of the myths about COVID-19 as well as the vaccines. Steve, thanks so much for coming back on Absolutely. the program. Absolutely. Uh, so one of the myths that we've heard a lot, and not just recently, but throughout the pandemic, is that COVID-19 is really no different than mm -hmm. the flu. I think people took to that initially, and, and maybe some still hold on to that based on the similarities and the symptoms between COVID and flu. Um, they are quite similar. However, there are two totally different things. Uh, the way that the COVID um, uh, pandemic has attacked the respiratory system and the overall severeness of illness is very different. For some people, we do know that, uh, that contracting COVID might just be a mild illness. Right. Um, and, and that is common. But for others, regardless of, of health status, it can be very severe and, and very damaging to, to, their, um, to, their, to their health. And, and ultimately can lead to death, as we as we well know. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we we saw that pretty dramatically in this past week in Gaston County, where we had kind of a large number of deaths compared to what we've seen in, in previous weeks. Unfortunately, um, you know, one of the other myths that we continue to hear a lot is that you know my immune system on its own is a better defense against COVID nineteen than any vaccine. Right. And again, we, we hear that too, is, is uh, you know, I'm healthy, I have a strong immune system, I'm, I'm, I'm young or I'm never, I never get sick. And I'm, in fact, I've never had the flu or the things that we hear people say all the time. But, um, you know, one's immune system to, to a virus like COVID does not always stand up. Um, and that's why vaccines are so important. Uh, is, is when you get a vaccine, it takes your immune system, which may be a, a strong immune system and boosts it. Uh, it really gives it a, a, a strong extra um, uh, help uh, to, to, to fight the virus. And for some people with underlying health conditions, um, their immune system might be struggling and they really need that vaccine. 
but to leave it to uh, an individual's immune system alone is, is really rolling the dice. Uh, and that's why we continue to push the mitigation efforts, but really where we need to talk about, what we need to be talking about is getting vaccinated. If you're not vaccinated, you really need to get vaccinated. I heard somebody put, kind of describe it this way, that like your immune system, like if you're fighting some sort of a virus, it's kind of like taking a test cold without ever having studied for it. And a vaccine is like basically very targeted studying, helps your immune system basically know what to look for, be ready to respond to it if it has to defend itself. Against yeah, I, I love that analogy. Or maybe, maybe it's even, uh, it gives your immune system the cliff notes. Yeah. Uh, it, gi it gives it um, all the information that it needs to, to accurately attack the virus to keep you safe. So we had a couple other myths that we wanted to jump through today. Um, and this is something um, that we're hearing more recently because we're starting to see more breakthrough cases. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, one of the things we see on social media, we've, we've heard through email, is that breakthrough cases and deaths of vaccinated people prove that getting the vaccine is worthless. Yeah, so um, I, I think we have to go back to what the, what the purpose of the vaccines were created for. Um, and, and that was to prevent severe illness uh, and death right. in individuals. Um, and, and therefore there are gonna be breakthrough cases, but in the vast, vast majority of those break, breakthrough cases, it, it is um, very, very mild symptoms. Uh, occasionally, we have seen where, where an individual has a breakthrough case and becomes hospitalized. Mm -hmm. um, again, oftentimes the outcomes of, of that hospitalization is very good because they were vaccinated. Um, unfortunately, we've also seen individuals who pass away who did have a breakthrough case. The vast majority of those are elderly individuals and people with severe underlying health conditions. Uh, most commonly is those who are morbidly obese. Hmm. Um, and we know when you're morbidly obese, you tend to have lots of chronic health conditions that go along with that. Diabetes, heart conditions, hypertension. Um, they're very sick individuals. So um, yes, you can um, uh, have a breakthrough case. Going to the hospital if you're vaccinated is very rare um, and even more rare is to pass away. And we're seeing studies, you know, released at the you know, the federal level talking about, you know, the the scale in terms of, you know, vaccinated versus unvaccinated, and, you know, I, I think the most recent study is that it's somewhere on, along the lines of 11 times more likely to be hospitalized if you um, didn't get vaccinated That's versus correct. if you did. That's correct. And and in fact, those that we're seeing hospitalized, you know, over 90 percent are unvaccinated. And uh, last I saw, everybody in Gaston County who was on a ventilator was unvaccinated. So, I mean, it's it's not just anecdotal evidence. I right. mean, it's very specific, like, I mean, this is literally what's happening. Right, right. Um, and here's one that, you know, the, the narrative has been, you know, so people almost kind of jokingly or sarcastically saying, you know, my body, my choice sort of thing right. in terms of a myth. But, you know, a myth has been my decision not to get vaccinated doesn't affect anyone else. Yeah, uh, your, your choice to get vaccinated impacts everyone. Um, so if you get vaccinated, you're not only protecting yourself uh, from potentially getting the virus, but more specifically severe illness, hospitalization and death. But the more we surround our loved ones and, and those in our community with people who are vaccinated, it impacts those who are unvaccinated because it helps protect them from getting the virus. On the flip side, if you choose not to get vaccinated, uh, you are much more likely to spread the virus in the community. Right. Um, and you're much likely to give it to other people. And so that again is where um, someone has a right to live in an environment that is free from, free from disease. And so therefore, um, your choice to get vaccinated can protect others or it could harm others. And so either way you go, um, choice in vaccination has a direct impact on our entire community. And I think that's a, that's a really good point because it's too often I think that the argument is there like, well, you know, if it's, I'm fine if you get vaccinated, but I wanna make my decision for me. And, you know, while everybody has the right to make their own decision, like to say that it doesn't have an effect on anybody else is just, right. yeah, it's, it's missing the point. Right. All right, so the last myth for today, um, most people who have died from COVID-19 would have died soon anyway. That's not true. Um, that, that's a, a, a clear um, uh, myth. 
when you when you look at those individuals who have passed away, there are countless examples of individuals who are who are extremely healthy. Um, we've seen examples locally here uh, where individuals who are runners, people who um, I think you had an individual on on one of the shows uh, previously on the on the uh, vaccine hesitancy video, yep. where that individual contracted COVID uh, and was near death. Was it was in right. an ICU? Um, and we, we see individuals all the time. And in, in our country, a lot of people have underlying health conditions and under normal circumstances live a very healthy life. And all it takes is something like uh, COVID-19 and uh, they could be in a serious predicament with their life on, their, on the line. Well, and the, you talk about some of the different um, complications that make it more likely for somebody to have an adverse effect or a really bad effect if they mm -hmm. get COVID, you know, the, the obesity, diabetes, some of these other things. Most of the time, those things on their own aren't going to kill you. Correct. Now, they're, they're going to lead to other problems and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, but like just being obese on its own isn't going to right. just have you keel over and die. Right. Usually. Right, and, and annually we as public health present the, the, the health status of our community. Mm -hmm. um, we do a community health assessment, which we're currently doing now, and right. encourage individuals to take that survey. And every year we present the results, and it clearly shows that in our community, as well as across this, our state and nation, it's not, this shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody, that those areas of chronic disease, including cancer, diabetes, heart disease, um, and, um, and lung issues, respiratory issues, are, are very alive and well in our community. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of individuals who suffer from those conditions. And so again, that's why when you have something like COVID-19 come along, we do see uh, severe impacts. To your point, most of the time, those, those, in, those diseases can be managed with, with medication and the treatment of a physician. Uh, but when you have a breakthrough case or you're unvaccinated and you contract COVID, it can have um, you know, life-altering effects. That's it for our myth segment this week. Thanks so much for watching this week's episode of COVID Conversations. Let's take a quick look at the data for this past week on COVID in Gaston County. COVID cases have started to level off just a little bit here in Gaston County over the last few weeks. Uh, we're still averaging close to 200 cases per day, however, uh, so a number that's still much higher than what we saw um, throughout most of the month of August and, and certainly in the months of July and June, uh, where the numbers were quite low. As we're looking at percent of positive tests, again, that metric that uh, we've been looking at is 5% or lower. Um, it's kind of the the indicator that the health department's been using for um, showing that we're going in the right direction. Um, our 14 day, av 14 day average of percent positive is at 17.1%. Um, and that's remained relatively steady. Our hospitalizations have gone down slightly um, in the last few days. Uh, they are still relatively high, um, averaging about 120 um, people in the hospital each day. And that is a average that is uh, adding up Caremont and Atrium Health, um, Gaston County patients at Atrium Health. Um, one of the slides that's not encouraging is looking at uh, deaths. Uh, this past week, we saw um, the highest number of deaths um, tied for the highest number of deaths that we've seen in any given week since the pandemic began here in Gaston County, uh, nearly 30 deaths last week. On the positive side of things, uh, we are starting to see a little bit more progress being made with vaccinations. Uh, Gaston County uh, has now 93,439 residents that are fully vaccinated. Uh, that's 49% of all Gaston County residents that are 12 years old or older, and that's basically all of our population that is eligible at this point to get the vaccine. Uh, compare that to 61% in that same 12 and older category statewide. Uh, partially vaccinated, um, we have more than 102,000 residents that are at least partially vaccinated. Uh, that's 54% compared to 66% statewide. <laughs>